Let's get one thing straight right away. Is it a GIF or is it a GIF? Let me know in the comments below which one you prefer and perhaps why. I've always called them GIFs, so for the remainder of this video, a GIF is a GIF and a GIF is a GIF, and I apologize for that right away, but I'm gonna to struggle to call them anything else. So if you've ever wondered how you can create eye-catching, looping GIFs just like this one, then stick around because in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can create looping GIFs in DaVinci Resolve really, really easily. We're gonna go through setup, editing your content, adding titles and graphics, and then how we can best export them in the most optimized format possible. So, if you're ready, let's jump on in. Right, let's get started. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 19. I'm on the edit page and I have a blank timeline open in front of me. As you can see, we've got the desired outcome just loaded into the source viewer here. So there is our GIF stroke meme sort of thing that we're working towards and I'll show you how we do that. So first things first, we're gonna need some footage. And in this instance, I've already been over and I've grabbed my stock footage. So there it is, I'm gonna use the same shot again. Uh, I thought this was particularly apt because we've got the European Championships happening at the moment in Germany, not too far from where I am. So I thought, why not do something sort of football or soccer for you guys in America related. So let's do something like that. So first things first, we need to set up our timeline. Now, if I come down to my project settings, I'm gonna use the little gear icon in the bottom right corner to do that. So if I click that, we've got some master settings here. Timeline resolution is 1920 by 1080. My timeline frame rate is 25 frames per second. And you'll notice that's locked. And that's because I've already brought footage into my media pool. Okay, so that's gonna actually impact us in a minute because one of the things we're gonna to want to do with our GIF is make sure we're reducing the file size as much as we possibly can to make it manageable, optimize it for sharing and make it very quick to, to load and play. So we're probably not gonna want this timeline resolution set as high as we have it because again, a very sort of high quality GIF is probably around 720p. So we want to reduce this as well. But rather than do it here in the project settings in this case, you can do of course, I'm not gonna do that though. I'm gonna come away and I'm gonna to come to where my timeline is and this is the timeline I've got here. So that's it right there. I'm gonna just simply right click on it, come to timelines, timeline settings as you can see here and then click that. And what you'll notice here is we've got some timeline settings. There's a separate box now that pops up. And this is because we're gonna set some independent settings for this particular timeline, which is gonna work really well for us. Now, at the moment, it's all grayed out, but if I come down to this use project settings, I can simply uncheck that, and everything now is gonna open up for me. So a couple of changes I'm gonna make here. First of all, my timeline resolution, I'm gonna drop that down. And actually, if you can't find one that you want, then simply enter it in underneath and you can have a custom number. Now I'm gonna use 480, just because I've done some testing and I like 480. And I'm gonna make it a square resolution. Often these are square, but they can also be vertical. They could also be you know, 16 by nine aspect ratio if you want, but typically they're either square or vertical. In this case, we're gonna make a square one. The timeline frame rate, as I said earlier, whilst my footage is 25 frames per second, often, we have animated GIFs that are actually not playing back at 25 frames per second, they're playing back a little bit less. And this also helps us reduce our file size at the end. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna drop this down, I'm gonna just go down to the lowest I can, which is 16 frames per second in my case. I'm gonna leave the mismatch resolution to scale entire image to fit, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. So let's click OK and we've created ourselves our timeline with independent settings. You can see here that we've got a little icon that denotes that this timeline has independent settings to the project, which is again, exactly what we want. So let's go back to our video clip, and I'm just simply going to bring it in in the way that I normally would. You can do it a number of different ways, but for example, I could load it up and then just drag it straight over the program viewer and then drop it in in any of the ways that I'm gonna do like that. So I might just use overwrite, and then in it goes there. So as you can see, that's worked, that's loaded perfectly into our new timeline with our new settings. And because I had it set at scale to fit, you'll notice that the whole frame of the video has been scaled into fit. If I wanted to change that, I could of course come back to my timeline settings, right click timeline settings, and I could of course change that if I wanted to, so I could set it so that we wanted it to centre crop with no resizing, and then that would change. And obviously I have then more control of moving it around and framing it as I wanted to. You can also do that directly from the inspector as well. So let me just reset what I just did there, like so. So if I wanted to, I could also come to that clip in particular, open up the inspector, which is in the top right, 
and then come down to retime and scaling, open that, scroll down where it says scaling, simply open it and then change any of the options here. So for example, crop, or I can do fill. And if I wanted to use one of those, I could also then use the smart reframe option here to then concentrate on an object of interest, maybe this chap's animated excited face, for example. Now, if you'd like to see a video about Smart Reframe, do remember to hit that like button for me, let me know and drop in the comments and say that you'd like to see it and I'll make sure we can do that one another time for you. But just for now, I'm not gonna concentrate on that. I'm gonna set it back to how I had it. And the reason being is again, I want to use this letterboxing effect that we've got going on for my titles, which is the next thing we're gonna look onto. But before I do that, one thing we might want to just again look at is the length of this. Now we're creating an animated looping GIF. So with that in mind, I don't need it to be 24 seconds. And this is 24 seconds long at the minute or so. So let's work with around sort of eight seconds. I think it's probably gonna be much better uh, for our needs. So here's a little tip for you. No matter where you are on the timeline, let's say we're here at 18 seconds and 11 frames, as long as nothing's selected, all you need to do is press the equals key on your numpad like so, and it will open this little time code entry box up here. All I'm gonna type in now is eight, and then a period or a full stop, and you'll notice that we now get eight seconds showing. And when I press enter, it'll jump automatically to eight seconds, and from here I can use a keyboard shortcut just to trim the end off of my clip, which is gonna be shift and close bracket, and then we have a clip that is eight seconds in the timeline. And if I press Shift and Z, I will do a zoom to fit everything in my timeline. I could, of course, come here and press this button, which is the full extent zoom, and then that will actually dynamically adjust my timeline to fit my footage. So that's all set, looking good so far. How do we add titles? Well, let me just close the inspector for two seconds to give us some real estate. And I'm gonna come up here to the effects panel, which is the top left, click that, come down to where it says titles, I'm gonna grab a very basic, simple title, and I'd recommend a very simple title here. These types of content, you know, these GIFs and so forth, they're not particularly good for animations and things like that, sort of fancy graphics. It's really kind of a simple sort of style. So let's just go with that for the time being. I'm gonna close my effects down. I'm gonna come over to the inspector again and open that up. And actually at this point, what I'm also gonna do is just use this button here to go to a single viewer mode. So I'm gonna click that. There we go, and that just gives us a bit more room to work with things. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna quickly type in some text. So I'm gonna adjust my title. There we go, so that's looking good. I'm now just gonna change the font and style it how I'd like. There we are, and I'm gonna reposition it into that nice little spot at the top that we have. Also, it's a cool thing here in this actual simple title tool is that you've got this font case option here. So you can change it from mixed to all caps and that also works really well for our needs. So there's the first one, just gonna leave that like that. And to make this really simple, I'm just gonna use this little quick shortcut to duplicate this particular title. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the Option or Alt key down, I'm gonna click on my title and I'm gonna drag up to create a copy. And then what I'm gonna do is select the bottom one, because I like to have it sort of orientated how my composition is orientated. So I'm gonna grab the bottom one and I'm simply gonna drag down to drag my copy down and now I'm gonna edit that. There we go, something like that sounds about right. And as you can see, we've got ourselves quite nicely to where we want it to be. We've got our nice little footage, we've shortened it down, we've created some titles, and we've got it in a nice square format with the settings that we want. So this is looking really good so far. Now let's just say at the moment, this is gonna provide us a black background, but let's say you wanted to change the color of the background. Well, you could do that really easily. So what I'm gonna do is come across to my track header in my timeline, I'm gonna right click, and then I'm going to add a track, like so. Now what I'm also then gonna do is just simply switch up this one level so that we now leave video track one open on the bottom. And I'm gonna come across to my effects again, and I'm gonna come across to the little search dial on the top here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for solid. And I'm gonna make sure actually I'm selecting on the toolbox and then I'll see a solid color pop up. I'm gonna drag my solid color down there and then drag it out to the extension of the full timeline. And now what I want to do is just change the color. So I can now set any color I want. So for example, let's just say that's that. And I can change my text to be appropriate. Now, of course, this is not a typical, uh, a typical color, shall we say, for the 
type of things you see on social media. But for example, if you wanted to kind of put some branding on it, your kind of colors, then you absolutely could do that if you needed to. I'm just gonna back that up a couple of steps because I don't want to do that in this case. I'm fine with the black background. So I could also just, by the way, turn that black. And there we go. And then that's gonna give me my black background as well. So we are pretty much there. We've pretty much done what we need to. Of course, if you needed to as well, you could jump into the color page and you could start throwing some effects on here. You could do some color grading on here if you wanted to. Uh, for example, if I wanted to, I could create a very quick effect here. So I'm just gonna create a very, very quick effect here. I've just created a couple of extra nodes and a layer node in this case. So what I want to do is actually turn this top load black and white. So I'm gonna come across to the RGB mixer, which is this chap here, just above my palette. Change that to monochrome. And then what I'm gonna do is select this bottom one because in the layer mixer, whilst it sounds unintuitive, the bottom one is actually the top one. So just to make that really clear. So it works the other way around. So this is actually our top layer now, if you will. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm simply gonna to come to my qualifier, which is this chap over here. And this isn't the hard and fast way to do this. You can do this a number of different ways, but this is just the way I quite like. It seems to give my workflow good results. So I'm just going to find a shot of our footage where I can get a nice qualification of this red color. And so selecting my qualifier, I'm just gonna drag this down like so and get a kind of a good red color. I can then use either of these options, either the feather or the additional eyedropper here to then just go in and just fine tune that a little bit more if I want to. It's not done too bad of a job, actually. I don't want to get too much of the other colors, but that's looking pretty good. And I'm just going to do this very quickly just to give you an idea of how much you can play with this. But again, we'll just have a little bit of a play. And let's say that's suiting our needs right now. So as you can see, what we've created there is a situation where our red colors are exposed. And this is looking kind of cool. It's, you know, our meme. You don't have to do this, of course, but it's an option. So as I say, you've got yourself now into a position where you're ready to export your finished product. So how do we do that? Well, let's come over to the deliver page. There we go. And all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to press Shift and Z a couple of times to get that into my full timeline. And I'm going to come over here and look at my options. So first of all, I'm going to need to give it a name. So let me give it a name. Okay, so looping football gift, give it a name and a place where I'm going to save it. Now, there's no actual preset up here for a GIF. So we need to manually set this as a custom export setting. So as you can see already, I've already got it actually set. But by default, let's say you were on a different setting. It might look something like this. When you come down to the format, you're just simply going to go to the top format drop down and then scroll up until you see GIF, click GIF, you can see animated GIF there. Now this will automatically take on the resolution of your timeline, so 480 by 480, and in this instance our frame rate is locked in at 16, there's nothing I can do to change that. So that's really good. Now because we've already, already taken care of the resolution and the frame rate, that's going to really help us in terms of reducing our overall file size. Equally, we've taken care of the duration and the length of our, our GIF, and as I said, because it's going to loop infinitely we are absolutely fine with that we just need to kind of keep it nice and short so this is one of the areas where i do recommend playing with your different settings to see if you get different outcomes but for me this is generally what makes the biggest difference is the actual resolution the frame rate and the length of your clip what you can also do is come down to these further settings here the last frame delay palette generation and then number of colors and this will also have an impact into the size of your GIF. So one thing you can do is first of all change the number of colors. So GIFs only support 256 colors. By reducing the number of colors in your palette, you're going to make that obviously a little bit smaller because it's not looking at so many colors. And it can also help you create that aesthetic of a GIF where it looks a little bit kind of not quite super eight or kind of eight bit, but kind of it's got that kind of look to it, right? So it's going that way. So palette generation, Medians is the default, but if you want to try and reduce the file size, you can also go to clusters as well. So without getting into too nerdy kind of information about what clusters and medians do and different palettes and so forth, I found that generally on the whole, if you want a, an image that has a little bit less sort of artifacting, um, but you don't, and you don't mind the size of it being too big, stick with medians, stick with 256 as the, uh, as the default. If you want to drop those down, obviously coming down these numbers is gonna create some interesting and maybe slightly wacky effects. So by all means, have a little look at those and see which ones give you the best results. 
For me, I'm gonna have a sweet spot, about one, two, eight colors, and then obviously the resolution set as I have it. So there we go, we have all of our settings in. Notice that with the GIF, there's no audio at all, so there's no point putting any audio in either, and we are pretty much good to go. So all we need to do now is drop this onto the render queue and then render that out. So I'm just gonna render that now for you. It's not gonna take too long. And then let me show you our final result. There we go, and as you can see, we've got our looping GIF looping away quite happily. It's 8.9 megabytes, so it's a bit of a bigger GIF, but we've obviously could do some further work to reduce it further if we need to. This is what probably I'd say is like a medium quality GIF. As I said, we could definitely reduce the colors slightly, but the point is we've got a looping GIF straight out of DaVinci Resolve very quickly, and you can have a lot of fun with this. So there you go. If you didn't know how to make a looping GIF in DaVinci Resolve before, now hopefully you do. It's actually a fairly straightforward process, I think you'll agree, and it is significantly easier than it used to be, but that's of course because you now know. Something else that's super simple to do is to hit the like button for me and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and then you'll get notified when I release more videos just like this one. Your support by subscribing to the channel massively helps me to continue to produce these videos and I'm really grateful for your support. Equally, hitting the like button just lets everybody else know that this was a good video and it encourages YouTube to show it to those people so there's a much greater chance that they'll see it too. Again, massively helping the channel and I really appreciate your support. For now though, that's us done. So whatever you're doing, I hope you have a great rest of the day and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.